So what is brainwave entrainment? Um, and how does it relate to meditation? Brainwave entrainment is a process by which you subject, thank you. You subject your brain to an external stimuli, which your brain then goes through the process of converting its own function to synchronize with that stimuli. What you can do with this is then use some sort of technology, which is the brainwave entrainment technology, to then alter the way your brain is functioning, thus alter the way your mind is working. <laughs> they do this with uh, audio and with visual. So the audio is something called binaural beats. Uh, some of you may have heard of before, as well as monaural beats and isochronic beats. Um, binaural beats is the one that I'll go into. This is where it kind of came from. The binaural beats use a system wherein the ears are subjected to two different tones, one in each ear. So say um, 4 hertz and 12 hertz in either ear. And then what the brain does, or the mind does, is sort of compute it to hear the tone in between. So you've got 8 and 12, so it's hearing 4. So you've got and you've got but what you're hearing in your brain is right? And so it's that oscillation that your brain then starts to synchronize to. Um, the idea of this came out of a guy named Christian uh, Christian Hugens in 1665 with the observation that if you put all his like pendulum clocks in a room, even if he set all the pendulums to move at a different different time, eventually they would all synchronize to each other. Um, this sort of discovery was capitalized on by a guy named Robert Monroe in the 70s, I believe, um, when he started realizing that he could use sound, oscillating sound waves, to stimulate certain states of mind. Uh, the famous, the one that he's famous for is the state of mind, which is like out-of-body experience, which he founded the Monroe Institute to do more uh, research into that he had found a way to use sound to give people the experience of an outer body travel, whatever that might mean. <clears throat> so what, what are the different brainwave states? I'm not sure how much you guys know about how your brain operates. Um, I'm not a neurologist or a brain scientist, but I can give you, I'll give you a quick download as far as I understand it. And the way the brain operates can be measured as far as its electric operation and the electric operation or the EEGs can then be sort of patterned or observed or measured to be in a certain oscillation, a certain wave or a certain frequency. And for describing the different frequencies that the brain is using at any given time, they have different names which accord to the level of oscillations that is functioning at that time. So these names are alpha, beta, theta, delta, and gamma. So delta is the lowest activity of your brain. It is between zero and four hertz. Um, delta is when you are in like the deepest sleep. There is no dreams, there's no visions, you're just like KO. <laughs> It's also, it's also what a lot of people don't get in sleep, which makes them feel really tired because they're not going into the state where their brain is actually resting. The next step up from there is theta, that's between like four and eight. Um, and that is like visions, that's like when you're in meditation and you're really deep and you're seeing these like crazy visions, that's theta, or when you're in a, an imagination place, that's theta. When you're in REM sleep, that's like primary theta. <clears throat> Next up from there is alpha, and this is between 8 and 12. Alpha is what you would call like relaxed attention or relaxed focus. So this is sort of the object of meditation, is to find yourself into a state where you're in relaxed focus. So in alpha, my defense mechanisms aren't very, aren't very up, very high, um, preventing information from coming in. I'm not thinking very much, it's very calm and smooth, and things are coming in. I can think very clearly about them, very intentionally. Um, up from there is beta. Now beta is like, 
you know, what am I going to do today? Okay, what's my next step from here? And then where am I going to go from here? And then i got to get on the train, but I don't have enough money. And I wonder, like, is it going to rain? I'm not really sure I didn't bring my umbrella. <laughs> like, this is, this is beta, right? And this is very tiring. <laughs> I, I, I imagine you guys are aware, like, this is very tiring. This is why meditation practice going into this office day can be really beneficial to brain health um, and why delta is really important for a restful night's sleep. Up from there is gamma. Now, I'm not super savvy on like the real <laughs> potentials behind gamma as a brainwave sort of state, but from what I understand, it's kind of like the, the tone that holds all the other tones together. It's related to the perception of just perception in general. Um, it's related to peak experiences and really high levels of cognition. And it's like the highest frequency pattern between 30 and 70 hertz, which is far higher than beta. Um, how does this work? Right, so I said that the brain will then synchronize to this external stimuli. Well, what the brain does is something called a frequency following. Um, so it hears something, and it will go, oh, okay, that's kind of similar to the way I operate. It's got a really strong presence. I'm going to try to smooth things out, and I'm going to, like, bounce in line. Right? <clears throat> so, now that we can understand how we can use technology or sound or light, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, you can do it with light frequency as well. There's actually these really cool devices called light and sound machines, where you kind of, like, sit down in a really comfortable chair, and you put on these glasses and these earphones, and you get that like, right? And you get also flashes of white light that happen in front of your closed eyelid. And what it does is it puts you in this state of trance, and you'll start seeing like these beautiful, amazing colored visions of all these just multiple patterns of color, <coughs> similar to other things that cause these types of closed eye visuals. <laughs> <laughs> um, light and sound machines feel more like entertainment, but um, so how does this all relate to meditation, right? So I made the comment, meditation is entering like an alpha type state. Um, deep meditation would be entering like a theta type state. That's when if you sat in meditation for a really long time, it's not like you're sitting in the room focusing on your breath anymore really calmly. You're somewhere completely else and you're learning really deep lessons about who you are from within through a you know, a vision created out of very subjective symbolism <clears throat> that arises out of your subconscious. This is training your brain to go to a state consciously that normally it would just do as it's falling asleep and then you get delta and then you wake up and you forget everything. Um, meditation is a powerful tool to help calm the mind from this constant thinking, to help you to think more clearly and to also help you to have a little bit more power of yourself within your environment so that you can no longer be immediately reactive to whatever's happening around you, but instead make more conscious choices because you have the practice of sitting in stillness and making the conscious choice to sit down. So how does brainwave entrainment as a technology relate to meditation? Well. One of the other things that meditation has found to do is what's called the balancing of the hemispheric activity in the brain. So we've got a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. You know, the left is very uh, like analysis and numbers and words, and then we've got the right pattern recognition and creative ideas, kind of music, and we're usually primary one more than the other. You know, some of us are much more creative but can't really set a goal, make a plan, and make it happen. Where some of us can really, really set a goal, make a plan, make it happen, explain how it's gonna to work to you, but they can't really, can't really figure out where to go from there beyond that plan because you can't really think up new ideas because you're too analytical as opposed to creative. Um, Dr. Dr. Charles Strobel in the 70s did a series of investigations in the people who were meditating and he found that um, there was a balancing of the hemispheric activity when you're sitting in meditation, and that this balance actually becomes more and more easy and more regular as you meditate more. So the guy I mentioned earlier, Robert Monroe, also discovered that you could use binaural beats to create the same hemispheric balance. So originally, binaural beats were, or brainwave entrainment was used to create this state of meditation to balance the hemispheres of the brain, to balance the way the mind functions, to balance the person. 
So when you start using this technology, you start being able to go into these meditative states like with a helping hand, like or like with training wheels. This would be very difficult to learn how to meditate, even if you know it's really beneficial to you and you know that you really want to try it, but you sit for five minutes, it's really tough. You just want to get up. Well, these sounds, these beats can help you sit for longer because you go into the state that you're looking to get into where you sort of zone more easily, more directly. And this creates a familiarity with that space, like a muscle memory, where you can access it more clearly. So you can learn how to balance before you take the training wheels off your bike. Um, other potentials for binaural beats. Um, anything you want to do to increase the way your mind functions. Like I listen to, I listen to like a very simple alpha when I'm reading a book and it goes from like my, my preconditioned ADD from a childhood of television watching and wanting whatever I want as soon as I want it to a state where I'm completely in the book. Nothing else exists in that moment except the information that is coming into me and I am perfectly associating it to every other aspect of myself that seems to relate to that. I'm learning very easily just by listening to the sound while I'm reading. It keeps me focused if I'm studying and it keeps me you know, really learning if I'm tired. If I, for some reason, can't seem to get my body to fall asleep, you know, I can use Delta to put me to sleep. You know, and this sound will say, okay, come on this way down into sleepy state, and then you just, you're just gone, you know? Um, I found that some of the most restful sleeps that I've ever gotten in my life were using really strong, like, Delta wave brainwave entrainment, because you just, lie down, and then all of a sudden it clicks, like, whoa, I haven't been thinking about absolutely anything for the last... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's morning. Or you're rolling over and you realize you have to take your headphones out, and then it's morning. Um, anything, anything you want to do to increase the cognitive functioning of your brain, you can do with brainwave and training. Um, however, it is training wheels, right? So eventually you want to get to a space where you have this strength on your own accord, as opposed to always having to be reliant on the technology to do it for you. Um, and this technology is an example of this symbiotic relationship to advance our own evolution that I was talking about in the intro. Because it seems meditation is starting to come out as something that's very important for us as a species to learn and to practice if we're going to continue to advance ourselves you know, into a world that isn't falling apart constantly, into a world where you don't have to be afraid of what your emotional environment is going to be 15 minutes after going into a public space, um, which can be very challenging for a lot of people. And with this technology, you can train yourself how to start to do this. You can advance your own evolution into a more calm, centered, sort of focused person through the use of a technology, which you can then utilize that new technique or ability in every facet of your life. So in conclusion, I have found a lot of really positive benefit from just using simple brainwave entrainment that I found on the internet that you can just Google on YouTube. No problems. Um, are there any questions? Kim? Um, okay, so a comment and then a question. Is you okay. mentioned about gamma, like how you didn't really know how to see the benefits in it's not. It's not that I don't. I don't see the benefits. Okay. Like it. It's very beneficial. Like listening to gamma is almost like being in that really peak state. Sometimes um, I just don't fully understand it. Oh, okay. And then, because yeah, you kind of mentioned about ADD or ADHD, and then like the gamma. Like I actually noticed that a lot of ADHD people are actually like super highly functioning because they're absorbing so much at the same time. Like they're absorbing so much information all at once, and they're actually sort of like highly intelligent. But what would your opinion be on going from like a gamma state to an alpha state um, fairly quickly? So you're like in the gamma state, absorbing all of this information at like a high, high frequency, and then going into the alpha state where you have um, a chance to sit and reflect and absorb, like actually understand that information that's all coming to you in that gamma state. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, gamma state is not something that most people achieve very easily. It's sort of like, you know, it's not just one wave function that's happening around your brain when I'm talking about, you know, I'm reading an alpha pattern from this guy's brain. It's like 
the primary sort of function, different parts of your brain are running at different frequencies at any given time, depending on what operation that section of the brain has to be doing. Um, gamma is sort of like the, like the telephone lines that those frequencies are being communicated on, and you only see really heightened levels of gamma in people who are in the midst of like peak or mystical experience, where they even found in a study with uh, llamas that, um, I'm not sure if the number here is arbitrary, but the idea that uh, Tibetan monks who had clocked approximately 40 to 50,000 plus, hour, plus hours of meditation in their lives found to have like immediately high levels of gamma when they went into meditation and then naturally higher levels of gamma, which is sort of like um, synchrony between the brain states uh, at any given time. The idea of going from gamma into alpha, it's like gamma and alpha would be operating almost simultaneously. So you couldn't use the entrainment to get reach the gamma level then? It would also be something that would be happen on your own through like in light No. No, I think you can. You can use gamma. You can use gamma to get to that state. Um, however, just like the idea of using this, and even the information that this state of brain function exists, is very young, and so there's not a lot of research on it. I don't have a lot of personal experience with it, um, so I couldn't say even experimentally. But um, you could use you could use the gamma beats to sort of put yourself into that state more frequently. But just because you use technology to get to a certain space doesn't mean you don't understand it. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't know how to use it, and it doesn't mean that it'll actually benefit you. So it could actually be potentially, uh, I don't want to say risky, but it could potentially be risky, like if that was in the wrong hands of somebody who maybe didn't really understand uh, potentially the capacity of it. No, I, I don't think it would be like potentially damaging. Um, potentially damaging is like, this is sort of like the force, right? Um, it can be used in a good way or a bad way, you know, like any technology. So um, what I would be worried about are things like going into an alpha state without your conscious choice. So when you watch television, the sort of the television commercials or TV shows, and even just the way the television flickers on like an old tube style, actually has a tendency to put you into an alpha state. So people making commercials could pattern the way, they could pattern the way the, the commercial flows, the sound that's being used in the commercial, and like the colors that are being used in the commercial, the way it unfolds, to put you into a state of mind wherein you just accept information. This is why when you watch television for a long time, you just, eventually you can't stop just flicking through the channels, and you want to go to bed, but you can't, is because you're in this alpha state. Um, danger, I guess, or not danger, but something to be warned about for ADD people is theta. Um, people with ADD spend too much time in theta wave because it's like the idea of like drifting off. Like you're drifting off because you're drifting into this like somewhere else that doesn't actually exist anywhere in but your mind. So if you have like problems with ADHD, I wouldn't recommend using uh, I wouldn't recommend using theta um, too frequently if at all. You're welcome. Um, Does it have to be a certain full volume or velocity of, of the different frequencies to be able to be affected? Uh, well, that's that's like art, right? So that's why sometimes you get like a binaural beat you find online, and you're just like, okay, that was alright. And then you listen to other ones, and you know, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, 20 minutes has went by, and I haven't even blinked. Um, so you can make your own. There are programs to do it, but I'd say look into how certain people make certain beats to see which way is most effective to influencing the brain because um, a lot of the states that you're going into uh, are experiential, not necessarily objective. So you could say like this person has a higher level of beta in this moment with a machine, but whether or not that person saying, well, I felt like I could focus better, you know, um, is sort of determined by your personal experience. So yes, you could do a little bit of research. You probably sort it out. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah. I first became aware of this uh, technology about 10 or 15 years ago when it was in its infancy. And uh, there was a lot of talk back then that eventually they wanted to incorporate biofeedback. You have, like, if you're doing, using it through a computer, you have a visual representation of what your brain is doing as opposed to just being the subject of whatever, the, uh, the, whatever mechanism you're using instead of just hoping it's doing what it's doing. It's actually taking measurements of, of blood pressure, pulse, as well as brain waves. Brain waves. And that's enhancing it, where you have a visual representation of what your brain is actually doing, 
versus the state you're trying to achieve. And that was all just theoretical at the time. And I kind of fell away from it. So I'm just asking if you're aware that they've developed this now for the a whole user to be able to actually have the visual representation of what you're biologically doing while you're using the machine. Tell it's important. Yeah, um, does anyone does anyone not know what biofeedback is? Okay, so biofeedback, uh, what are you saying, is sort of a, a machine that you plug into you, like say we're talking about like EEG patterns in the brain, so biofeedback would be something where you'd set up the electrodes on your head and it would be programmed to do something when you hit a certain state, so um, an example would be uh, so you have really high blood pressure. A biofeedback machine, um, a biofeedback machine could set it up so that it, the light, a little light goes on when your blood pressure is going down. And because you can see externally whether or not you're changing or facilitating this internal process, which you can't really notice, um, all you have to do is try to learn how to make the light go on and off, and then effectively you've learned how to reduce your blood pressure because you've learned how to make this light go on. Um, so this is kind of the idea of biofeedback. Um, biofeedback machines are really expensive, so they're not exactly accessible to the home user, um, and it would be you know, a really beneficial thing to have if you're saying, okay, well, I definitely want to be in this state, um, but I think biofeedback would probably work better without the binaural piece, so then you can sort of set yourself up so it's like, all right, I'm specifically looking to go into alpha, and then you'll know how to get into alpha through whatever process you need to cognize by seeing the little light turn on or the little beep or seeing the wave patterns come up. Um, for binaural beats, in regards to knowing that you're going to the right space, I would say more trial and error and using just like experiential evidence, you know, will show you whether or not you're in that space or not based on objective observations of what that space is like by other people and your personal experience. Um, yeah, so I've never used a biofeedback machine. I would love to, but I don't, I can't afford like, it's like five. Uh, yeah, it does have a lot of potential. Like that idea of lowering your blood pressure is supposed to be a completely involuntary process. People should not be able to, like we're not supposed to be able to do that. That's like a subconscious mechanism. Yeah, through the use of biofeedback, you can train yourself to lower your own blood pressure. And then that is something you could do without the biofeedback machine later. And they have taught people to be able to do all sorts of involuntary processes using biofeedback. So it does have a lot of potential, but it's unfortunately not as focused upon as it could be with investments. Any other questions? Uh, Neil? Hey, James. Um, you had mentioned that uh, there's access to these binaural beats online. Uh, what mode would that come through? Is it music? Is it uh, specific tones? And and are there any specific sites that you'd recommend? Um, yeah, okay, so it is through, it is through like MP3s or uh, Flawless Audio, like FLAC, which is a, it's like a really high level of crispness in the music quality. Um, and you could just experiment by finding them on YouTube, or you can just download Google um, binaural beats or brainwave entrainment mp3 free download. I know that if you're not paying for it, you are the product, but some people <laughs> just make ones and say, you know, like, oh, okay, here, here's for free, this is my art, it's something that I'm doing. Um, if you're looking for a place that's really reliable, um, I, Dr., there's a guy named Dr. Jeffrey Thompson, he makes really cool ones. He also makes uh, audio tracks that are designed to put the mind and body into a state of healing, which is interesting. And usually, instead of just that whomping tone, it's like you know, like a forest, like the rain falling, and like or like animals chirping in love in the spring. But you're being entrained by something going on in the background. Um, and then there's the unexplainable store. The unexplainable store is a guy that makes really powerful, very cool binaural beats for a whole bunch of different um, sort of goals. And you do pay for it. However. Um, if you want, if you think somebody's doing a really good job at something and it's their art, it's how they live their life, then you know, like invest invest your monetary energy into promoting their their life's work. I would encourage. So the unexplainable store. Any uh, Phil, you had your hand up. Well, I was just gonna say I've experimented around a lot with these and looked through a lot of different sources, and the unexplainable store the best by far that I found the most effective. 
So they are, they do tend to be between like nine and twenty-four dollars. But your search is kind of over for that particular isochronic tone. There are hundreds and hundreds of each, like alpha stage, but there's a lot that don't work or aren't very effective because they don't know what to do. The next one will sorry, you will pay a bit, but you will be very happy with them because they are very effective. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, however, before you start spending, would you say like eight to twenty-four dollars? Um, like use, get like an eight-minute clip on YouTube and just see like if there's a difference there. There is a there is a learning curve, so your brain becomes more susceptible to entering a state by and it allows itself to be sort of entrained as you do it more. Um, I also want to touch on you said isochronic beats. Okay, so binaural beats are the two separate tones that create the third perceived tone in your, in your brain or in your mind only. Um, isochronic beats are specifically created like sound waves that are actually like, um, we're saying you've got the wave here, it's like whoa, 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 it's the best way I can explain it. And that would be alpha, right? So in each time it's kind of going up, whoa, up in here is like also alpha, and then down here, is also alpha, so it's like multi levels and it's very intense. Sort of, um, there's multiple levels of entrainment happening at any given time for the sound, and it's much more effective. And you don't need headphones, you can just have it on a stereo if you're lying down. Thank any you. other questions? Hand? Is that a hand? Carrie? No, no questions? Okay, does anyone else have any questions at all about brainwave entrainment or anything like that? Yeah? I just, I just wish I could School. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, that would be cool. Um, I wish I had it in high school, that's for sure. But then again, I don't think it was the fact that my brain wasn't working that made me disinterested. Um, with, <laughs> with, with schools, I think it's, it's really important to, again, start to see how technology is evolving and to see how our children are evolving and to sort of match technology as well as the curriculum and the environment of the school to the way our children are beginning to learn now as they're adapting to the new environment of increased information stimuli and such. Um, binaural beats or brainwave entrainment would be really cool. Um, however, it's kind of touch and go. Like, like, what kind of, if you give kids these like things, all right, well, listen to this while we teach you. <laughs> you know? It really depends on where the attention is coming from, but it's a very good idea. Yeah, because it does make you subjectable or subjected to, depending on how you use it, like just more integration, and you have to be careful at any point what it is that you're letting go in, because that which you bring into who you are is that which comes out like G-I-G-O, I'm sure a lot of you are savvy on that, garbage in, garbage out, so you have to be careful about what you're putting into your being, because that's who you are. Yeah, I think on that note, like, even taking yourself outside of the binaural beats, anytime that you put yourself into a meditative state, state or, um, yeah, a state where you're consciously open to what's in your surroundings, it's just being conscious and aware of when you're doing that and what you're allowing, but also not giving into the fear of everything out there. <laughs> yeah, actually that makes me think of a quote that I'm about to bastardize in my paraphrasing that I read this morning. Just the idea that, uh, you know, don't take boundary dissolving substances and go to raves that have, you know, where the intentions and the energy are not constructive, where they're destructive and you're surrounded by a bunch of lost souls looking for some sort of like parasitic sexual encounter. Um, because <laughs> that, that really changes who you are. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yes. Well, James, do you mind if we yeah. save that for after? It's um, yeah, I can answer your question face to face if you want. Thank you everybody for this opportunity. Thank you.